And now it's time for some real talk. Real talk with Mark Ramsey. Real Real talk talk with with Mark Mark Ramsey. Ramsey. Here we go again. Mark and Mike telling you what they think, even when they're not really thinking. Welcome to It Doesn't Take a Genius. Ramsey is my name, and I'm by myself today. Hey folks, welcome to It Doesn't Take a Genius. Uh, I'll explain. Uh, Mike and I have extremely busy falls. Uh, We are somewhere different each week, and so we are pre-recording a lot of episodes and making sure we stay on our weekly uh, uh, cadence where we've been doing this well over 200 episodes now and just don't want to give it up. We want to keep producing a nugget uh, a, a week that we can provide you. This is a nugget that we have talked about doing for a long time and never got around to doing. It's also something that I had a request for at uh, a recent uh, uh, talk I gave. Um, I was at the Kentucky State Police Leadership Summit. It was absolutely amazing, just dynamite speakers. Um, I got my own, um, if you can see this in the camera here, I got my own challenge coin from the Kentucky State Police, 75 years old as of 2023. And... Essentially, I promised that I would uh, do something uh, to sort of put my talk in a, uh, a recorded version uh, so that folks got a chance uh, to uh, in, enjoy that uh, missed it. Uh, so, uh, Madam Heather, this one's for you especially. Um, but we've talked about doing this for a long time because this is just such a, a, a basic system that, that uh, anybody can work with. And in fact, that's really what I like to talk about is this is how to work with anybody. Um, and so I, I'm just going to quickly go through this so that you've got a down and dirty understanding of the DISC model uh, that has its roots in uh, ancient times uh, for understanding the differences in how we behave uh, in our Uh, interactions with others and how we're different from each other. So I'm going to walk through this um, as an episode. So the the first thing I should tell you is that when I did this with the Kentucky State Police, uh, we talked about how you have to use your right hand and your left hand. When I do this for an audience uh, that's live, I have them uh, write down, uh, you know, usually the name of their company or something like that as many times as they can in 10 seconds. And we find out who uh, was the big winner. We had a big winner uh, at the uh, Leadership Summit. I promised uh, that I would make her famous. So here she is. She's amazing. Um, And then I have them hold up that pen, put it in their offhand, and do it again. How many times can they write the name of their company in 10 seconds? And guess what? It's less. And not only is it less, but it looks a little sloppy. right? And so we talk about that. You know, what What did it feel like to do that? Um, you know, and people say awkward, uncomfortable. It felt like I was learning to write again. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the reality is, is that they can do it, right? If, if my arm was in a sling, I'd figure out how to write with my offhand and, you know, endorse uh, paychecks and sign contracts and so on. Um, I'd, I'd figure out how to do it. It would just take a lot more energy. And uh, the state police can identify with this. Anybody who has to do an annual qualification for, uh, you know, carrying firearms, you know, they they shoot with their offhand as well as with their uh, regular hand. But here's the thing. Nobody has to tell you, hey, make sure you pick up that gun, make sure you pick up that pen with your dominant hand. You don't think about it, right? You just do it. And so so that's uh, at the foundation of what we're talking about here. I ask people, what's more important, relationship or results? What's more important, relationship or results? And I have this image of a a relay race. And uh, there are these ladies running the relay race, and they all want to have the result of first place, right? They all want to have the result of first place. But there's a problem. It doesn't matter if you're first place if you're not holding the baton that was handed off by each leg of the relay race, right? So the reality is is that they have to trust each other, get in sync with each other, communicate well with each other so that they're running at the same speed and know exactly where that baton's going to be handed off and take off. 
And uh, that's why it's the relationship that leads to the results. And that's true for all of us, right? We all, of course, want results, whether it's fulfilling your uh, charitable organization's mission or whether it's uh, revenue and profit for your business or whether it's something you're trying to achieve as a family. We want results, but it's the relationship that most easily leads to those results. But we have a problem, breaking news. So hopefully if you are uh, watching this on YouTube or listening on the podcast, uh, you're sitting down. Um, I, don't, I don't want this to you know, cause you uh, grief. I, I hope you have smelling salts with you. Uh, you know, go ahead and put your head between your knees if you need to. Breaking news here. People are different. You heard me right. People are different. Uh, and perhaps you're not shocked by this. Uh, we all kind of know it, right? We all grew up in families, in households where people were different from us. And uh, we perhaps now live with people who are different from us. You have a, a spouse or loved one who's very different from you. And it's kind of uh, awesome. It's kind of endearing. It's also kind of frustrating, right? And now translate that over to work, right? At work, we have all sorts of differences, and, um, and it is hilarious, and it is fun. But the reality is, is that many times those differences really get in the way of us getting things done. We haven't figured out how to click with each other, to work with each other. And what's going on there is the same thing that happens with the, the dominant hand and the offhand, right? There are ways that I don't even have to think about it that come naturally to me to communicate, to solve problems and think about things, to disagree with others and bring up uh, conflicting points of view. There are ways that I naturally gravitate to doing those things. And if I have to do it in a way that's different from my preference, it takes energy. It takes energy. It's that frontal cortex, the prefrontal cortex of your brain is working overtime because you're having to really focus on what you're doing. You're having to be very conscious about it. Uh, just like I was when I was writing with my offhand. I once did this presentation with uh, some, well, it, it, actually it happens a lot, where I do it with uh, folks who are uh, not native English speakers. And they've told me that's exactly what it's like for me uh, going through the day speaking English, right? It takes a lot of energy. The, the front part of your brain is overclocked like a computer, and it's taking more energy to, uh, to, to focus and be conscious about what you're doing, thinking about what you're doing instead of just unconsciously doing it like you do with your dominant hand. And um, that's why some days we go home really, really drained. Uh, maybe it's because we were doing an activity that just doesn't come naturally to us, having to think about things in a way that's not natural to us, having to work with somebody uh, that is just coming about things uh, a way that's very different. And in fact, as we go through the rest of the presentation, I'd like you to think about who's your hardest case? Who's your hardest case? So for uh, those of you uh, who are listening, I've got a, a slide here on the YouTube uh, episode uh, that has a, a couple very uh, well-known memes. Uh, we've got Grumpy Cat, you know, this cat that just looks perennially like he uh, hates everybody and life in general. And then we've got Overly Attentive Girlfriend who is very much into her relationships and uh, is always smiling and always caring for you and uh, kind of in your face. And you can just imagine these two would be hardest cases of each other, right? They, they would drain each other if they had to keep adapting to the other person's way of being. So be thinking about that as we go through the rest of this episode. Who's your hardest case and it, can you figure out how they operate and, and how you could work with them? Uh, Mike Marshall uh, has a, a great slide he uses for a lot of his workshops, and he uh, had one for our DISC workshop uh, that uh, he made up. This workshop could make you a better grandparent, parent, spouse, son or daughter, friend, leader, manager, coach, neighbor. I mean, we could go on and on. If something helps you professionally, it helps you personally. If something helps you personally, it helps you professionally. You're one whole person. You bring that whole person to work. You bring that whole person home. Um, and, and so what we're talking about here in this episode, uh, we genuinely hope helps you not just with your hardest case at work, but with everything you've got going on at home too. So let me set it up by telling you this. Um, I'm going to uh, describe a scene for you. Imagine an elevator 
imagine four people on that elevator. Um, I've got a, a visual for this uh, for those who are uh, uh, watching on YouTube. And um, imagine that they hear somebody approaching the elevator, uh, you know, clop, 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 trying to catch the elevator. And our first character is Dawn. Dawn um, is uh, a little frustrated. Uh, you can see her tapping her foot. She's looking at her watch. She's huffing. She's rolling her eyes. She needs the elevator door to close because she has places to go. She has things to do. And Ian, meanwhile, is standing next to her, but he's actually sort of turned, sort of facing uh, the car of the elevator, and he uh, is, is kind of actually glad that the person caught the, the elevator and is getting on, and, you know, he um, uh, cuts up with her a little bit. Uh, he, he's kind of actually glad that he has one more person to interact with. He kind of gets energy from that. Behind Dawn and Ian is Sue, and you barely see her, but she, she actually smiles at the new person, takes a step backwards, uh, wants to make sure there's enough room. Very supportive, very kind. And then there's Carl. Uh, so Don, Ian, Sue, and Carl. Carl is actually not looking at anybody. He's looking, you, you know, the little, the little uh, 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 framed certificate on an elevator that says when it was last inspected and how much weight it can carry. Well, Carl's looking at that. And Carl's verifying that this elevator is uh, safe and secure, and he's estimating the weight load of all the people uh, combined. And he's probably right, by the way, about that uh, little estimate. Uh, but Don, Ian, Sue, and Carl, for very different reactions to the exact same event, right? And um, nowadays we call that dominant, influential, steady, and conscientious. For um, uh, basic styles, for very broad brush strokes of, of sort of types of behaviors that people exhibit uh, that we've been using for a very, very, very long time. When I say very long time, I mean really long, like uh, at least 2,400 years plus. Uh, you've heard of Hippocrates, the Hippocratic Oath that our doctors still take, the, the father of medicine. He was one of the people who um, uh, sort of uh, uh, proposed uh, this view of medicine, and it was a view that we uh, used uh, up until, uh, well, after the Civil War, let's put it that way, in America. Uh, so this held sway for a very long time, and it was called the humors. Uh, the humors were the four fluids that they thought made up your bloodstream. Uh, blood, uh, phlegm, uh, and two kinds of bile. Yep, they thought that was in your bloodstream, and they thought that when those were out of balance that you would have illness. And uh, so, you know, you needed to eat certain foods to uh, get your fluids back in balance. And uh, maybe you needed to even have uh, bleeding. You needed to have a leech attached to you to suck off some extra blood or, you know, a little razor cut or what have you to uh, let, let out some of that excess fluid. Well, the reason I'm telling you all this is because that is what they thought was affecting personality as well. So if you had uh, too much of one of the kinds of bile, it would make you a, a little more a little more headstrong, a little more action oriented, and um, maybe a little less people oriented as well. And so uh, we still use the language, right? Uh, bile comes from your gallbladder, and we still say to this day, if somebody's being a little pushy, uh, we might say you've got a lot of gall. Right now, what we don't mean by that is, um, you know, hey, your gallbladder seems overactive, and I think you ought to go to a doctor and get it checked out. You know, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that uh, you're pushy, right? And we're using this old language. Melancholy was another one of the words uh, that they used. Um, and humor itself, the reason we say humor is uh, uh, something that's funny is because uh, back in Shakespeare's day, he was writing plays, he, he and many others. Uh, where they were showing the interactions of characters whose humors were very different from each other. Uh, their, their fluids were different, and the interaction between them, you know, their misunderstandings and how they had friction, it was very funny. And so these uh, comedies, these plays with happy endings, became humorous comedies. We still use the phrase today, and if you think about most of the sitcoms and movies you've watched, 
it's often the interplay of these four basic character types. Uh, think Friends, think Seinfeld, etc. So um, that's a little bit of background. Now, by the time you get to the 1920s, we've got this uh, researcher, uh, William Marsden, who is um, uh, taking this a little more in depth, and he's uh, putting in sort of modern scientific terms. There's a lot of research around this. Um, but I'll take you through the, the disk, what's been, become the disk system that's based on these four humors. Um, and so think of it this way, and you can, you can do this in your head uh, because these are basically two questions you can ask yourself and it will probably help you identify if you're a D, an I, an S, or a C, dominant, influential, steady, or conscientious. First, action versus stability. Which do you prioritize? Do you prioritize, do you value uh, action over stability or stability over action? And the second is collaboration versus challenge. Do you value uh, collaborating over challenge or does it come to you more naturally to prioritize challenging over collaborating? If you need a little more on that, which you probably do, um, think about what it might look like. A, a person who is valuing and prioritizing action over stability, they probably look to others as if they are fast-paced, uh, probably pretty assertive, uh, dynamic, bold, outspoken. And the folks that value stability over action, maybe a more uh, moderate pace, a little slower paced, uh, calm, methodical, careful. That's what they come across uh, uh, looking like. Uh, so so that's, that's action versus stability, and you probably prefer one over the other. Which is it? The other question is challenge versus collaboration. So collaboration and challenge, if, if you're uh, more of a challenge-oriented person, uh, you're probably seen as task-oriented. Uh, you come across as pretty logic-focused, truth-focused. Uh, you're seen as very objective. Uh, you, you're seen as questioning a lot of things, challenging a lot of things, ideas, people, uh, all sorts of things. And then the flip side, uh, people that are uh, more uh, uh, likely to prioritize collaboration, um, it's about uh, being uh, more people-focused for them. Uh, they come across as very empathetic, uh, receptive, uh, agreeable, uh, very accepting, you might say. Um, so again, you probably prefer one over the other. Do you prefer to challenge or to collaborate? Uh, which of the two would you choose? Um, now, that's the, the basic gist of it. So if, if you're a person who says, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty task-oriented. I like to stay on task more than focus on the people. And, and I'm pretty fast-paced. Well, that's a person who uh, prioritizes challenge and action. And that would put you in the quadrant uh, for uh, the D on the disc uh, uh, circumplex, it's called. D for dominant. Uh, you're results-oriented. You're a results-oriented person, and that uh, is something you value and prioritize, and it probably energizes you to get those results. Uh, if you're the flip side, if you're a person who says, well, I'm moderate-paced, I'm, I'm a little slower, I like to be a little more thoughtful, then, then take action first. And, and I am people-focused. You know, I, I do think about the people in the situation more than I think about the truth of a situation. Well, that probably makes you an S uh, for, for steady. Uh, you probably really appreciate and value and get energy from being able to support other people and be, be supportive. So that's how DISC works. You, you basically answer those two questions, and you can probably pin yourself down to the four quadrants, one of the four quadrants. And... Certainly, uh, there's a big very uh, a variety of, of, of ways that could show up inside one of those quadrants, right? If you're a D who really uh, emphasizes action a lot more than you emphasize the challenge, that's going to make you um, closer to a DI. And if you're um, more the person who challenges what it's all about for you, you're maybe more of a DC, right? So uh, there's all sorts of variations, but it's the two basic questions, and answering those probably narrows you down to one of the four quadrants. Now, um, I would invite you to think about uh, your own style right now. Which of the four would you be, D, I, S, or C? And also think about your hardest case. And my guess is, because I've done this for a while, is that your hardest case is probably the opposite style to you. So if you're a D, 
the S's are kind of hard for you to click with. If you're an I, it's the C's and vice versa. And so um, as, you, as you look at the chart, you can sort of think about this in terms of um, myself and that other person, right? That other person I'm working with. So, so let's just very quickly as we wrap up, think about this from both perspectives. Getting to know yourself better, right? Using DISC to get to know yourself better. If you were to uh, sit down and journal about this, what I'd invite you to do is think about if your organization uh, had a new hire and you had a chance to take them to lunch, it'd be nice if you could tell them how best to work with you, right? Um, what are your strengths? If you are the kind of person who is a D, you know, your strengths are getting results probably, taking action, being willing to uh, challenge ideas and, and make sure, you know, we're, we're uh, uh, not uh, going off the rails on the things we want to accomplish. Those are probably strengths for you. Do you have some blind spots? Yeah, I bet you do, right? I bet sometimes you uh, uh, are perceived as running over people when you're really action-oriented and really focusing on results. You're running over people and forgetting that they need support. Uh, you might have some fears. Um, you might have some fears around not getting results, not getting a chance to uh, be competitive on something that you're, uh, you, you find important. Um, so that's, uh, that's you know, one set of things you could tell them. You could also tell them how to effectively work with you, right? If I'm a D, I probably want you to kind of cut to the chase, right? Let, let's, just, let's just get down to the bottom dollar here. I don't need a lot of small talk, right? Um, if, if you're a C, you probably want time to do a little bit of research and make sure that we're being accurate about what we're saying because you value thoughtfulness and you value challenging things. You want a chance to do that challenging. So uh, I could go around the, the circumplex and give some, some basic ideas there, but the idea is that maybe it's you need to do that. Maybe it's you need to spend some time thinking about what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, what are things that would help somebody work effectively with me. And, of course, what's going to happen there is that you'll be thinking of things you could do. What's one thing you could do differently to better work with those around you? Right to better uh, uh, be more effective in in your work and at home. So that's one side of this coin. Another is that uh, you can get to know yourself and you can get to know your team. Right, so we can spend time getting to know the team. And and let me just give this example. Uh, and we've talked about this on the podcast before. But if you are a, a team oriented person, if you are the kind of person who uh, has to work with a team, I guess is really what I should say, um, you might find that a team, and frankly an individual, needs to answer some basic questions about any decision they're making. So let me say that again. Uh, people who are making decisions and teams that are making decisions, deciding on plans, probably have at least four basic questions that they're thinking about and need to answer. If they're not thinking about them, they still have to answer them. And so the questions happen to co uh, correspond with the four basic styles in DISC. So the Ds, the dominance, results-oriented, right? Action and challenge are important to them. They're the kinds of folks that are saying, what are we going to do? Let's take some action. Let's, let's make a change so that we can get better results than we're getting now, so that we can have a better plan than we've had. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's move forward. Let's, let's push to action. And that's great. And the eyes, the influentials, you know, they're very enthusiastic. Uh, they, they value enthusiasm. So they're on board. They're like, yeah, let's do this. By the way, um, who are we going to need to collaborate with? So the D's saying, what are we going to do? But the I's saying, who are we going to work with? Who's going to be impacted by this decision? Who needs to be on board with this so that they can help us get others on board with us? Who needs to be brought in to uh, help us uh, make good decisions. They're, they're thinking about the people involved. The S's, meanwhile, steady. Uh, you know, they value stability. They value collaboration. So they're thinking about support. And what they're saying is, how can we support this? Fine, whatever you guys want to change to, that, that sounds good if you've given us time to sort of uh, think this through. But, like, how are we going to do it? How are we going to implement our plan? How are we going to make sure that we've thought through the details that we need to think through 
um, so that uh, it's it's a good plan going forward. And the C's, God bless them, somebody's got to say this. They're conscientious, they value accuracy, and they're saying, why are we making this change? Why do we think this is the best plan? Are we really sure that this is true and valid, what we're saying is, is going on that we need to do? So as you think about that, Imagine the values that you are representing in a team setting when you've got all four of the styles represented, right? So here's the the danger zone, right? You got a team that's made up of all D's and C's, for instance. Well, guess what? They're not going to uh, display a lot of enthusiasm or uh, uh, think naturally about supporting their people. They're not going to collaborate. They might not... Uh, uh, come up with a very detailed plan. They'll just sort of charge forward because they know what they're doing is right. But who's going to be asking who? Who's going to be asking how? Um, you know, who needs to be involved in this decision? Who's going to be impacted? Have we brought them up to speed? How are we going to implement this plan? What are the details of the plan? Uh, those are good questions. And the same true the other way around, right? If we're making a decision and we've thought through the people side and we've got a plan, but we haven't really baked it all the way on terms of uh, whether or not it's a good idea. Um, that's a problem. The C's are going to have a problem with that for good reason. And what if we just keep making plans, but we never actually do anything? And the D's are so good about making sure we actually take action. So you need D's and I's and S's and C's when you're making a decision. And if you don't have them, you probably are going to have to compensate for that in some way on the team by bringing in other folks by making sure you carve out time to think through the things that don't come naturally to you. Here's the beauty of it. What I'm basically saying is that hardest case you were thinking of earlier could be your very biggest ally. Your hardest case could actually be your biggest ally. The D needs an S to help him make sure he's thinking through how to support the people involved. The S needs a D to help her actually take action. So I can't believe this exists, but I found a picture of overly attentive girlfriend and grumpy cat together smiling well grumpy cat's sleeping but it's the same basic premise they're they're working together and um and that's the idea is that uh we really need to go from seeing other people as different and a problem to different and oh thank goodness they're different because that means they're bringing something to the table that i don't have and need that's the beauty of disc you get to know yourself better and you get to value and appreciate others more and work better as a team. Relationship leads to the results. That's the gist. Um, I'll stop talking now. Um, you know, we never say this, but I really need to say, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and uh, leave us a five-star review and all the stuff that we uh, are supposed to say. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this. Um, Mike has a little treat for us. While he's been away, he has... Um, well, I'm just going to let it play. I hope you enjoy his latest hit single. Have a great day. Mark and Mike, they met on the line. With Ford and GM, stars did align. Two sharp minds with a vision so bright. In the world of business, they took flight. Mark loves the classics, Greeks on his mind. Four kids at home, a coach so kind. Mike's quick wit can cut through the noise Making the complex clear with poise On the road to leadership we walk together Building bridges, facing stormy weather Guiding young souls through the twists and turns In the podcast of life there's so much to learn Now they're on air in a digital stream Helping young leaders chase their dream Talking about Plato and Aristotle's ways Mixing old wisdom with modern day craze Mark's got the humor, Mike brings the fire Together they're building a world to inspire Coaching and leading, making people grow With stories and insights that always flow On the road to leadership, we walk together Building bridges, facing stormy weather Guiding young souls through the twists and turns In the podcast of life, there's so much to learn Bye.
bottles to the factory floor They share the secrets, opening doors It's not just about business, it's about the heart Helping young leaders make their start Mark and Mike, a duo so grand With wisdom and laughter they take a stand Coaching and guiding through highs and lows In the world of leadership, their legend grows So tune in, young managers, hear what they say On the road to success, they'll light your way On the road to leadership, we walk together Building bridges, facing stormy weather Guiding young souls through the twists and turns In the podcast of life, there's so much to learn a boardroom battles to the factory floor They share the secrets, open doors It's not just about business, it's about the heart Helping young leaders make their start From the boardroom battles to the factory floor They share the secrets, open doors Mark and Mike, a duo so grand With wisdom and laughter they take a stand Coaching and guiding through highs and lows In the world of leadership, the legend grows so tune in, young managers, hear what they say On the road to success, they'll light your way In the world of leaders, come what may With the knotted, the classics, and a future so bright Join them on this journey into the night